Hey guys, today we have a little car that doesn't have enough horsepower to drive up the hill. Let's see if we can train it to use momentum to propel itself to the goal. If you haven't installed Gymnasium, use this command. If you need more help installing, check out my install guide. The link is in the description. This video uses probably 80 to 90% of the concepts and code from the Frozen Lake video. I encourage you to check that out first and then come back. I'll have a link in the description. Let's start with the basic code to launch the mountain car environment. I'm going to hit F5 to execute this code. Let me put a breakpoint here so the car doesn't start moving. First, we create an instance of the environment. Then we call reset to initialize the environment. We're only interested in the first parameter. When we call reset, the car is dropped somewhere near the bottom of the hill. The state consists of two numbers, the position and the velocity. The starting velocity is always zero, but depending on where it is around the bottom, it might start rolling by itself. Next, we have the terminated flag. Terminated is true when the car gets all the way up the hill and reaches the goal. The way the reward structure works, or more accurately, the penalty structure, is that we get minus one for every action that the little car takes. The available set of actions is either driving left, staying neutral, or drive right. So the two conditions that ends the simulation is reaching the goal, or when the car is taking more than a thousand actions. If I put anything less than a thousand, the car is going to have a hard time finding the goal. If I use more than a thousand, then it's going to increase the training time. So a thousand seems to be the sweet spot. We start by randomly choosing an action and then executing the action. When we take the action, we get a new state. The state consists of a position and velocity. We set the current state equal to the new state. And also we want to make sure we collect the reward or penalty. Now let's talk about queue learning. The end result of queue learning is a lookup table that the AI can come, find its position and velocity, and decide what action it can take. The largest value in the table is the prescribed action. So if this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, then the AI is going to go right. On the frozen lake problem, the states are pretty straightforward. Each box is one state. However, on the mountain car problem, it's not very straightforward how the states are going to work out. Because position and velocity are floats, so you're going to have an infinite number of combinations. The way to handle this is to divide up the positions into segments. If the car is anywhere between here and here, we're going to say it's in position 0. If it's in here and here, it's going to be position 1, and so on. And we'll do the same thing to velocity. Just chop the velocity range into segments. OK, let's divide up the segments. Position can be anywhere between negative 1.2 to 0 0.6. We're using this NumPy linear space function to divide up this range into 20 segments. And then we're doing the same thing with velocity, which goes from negative 0.7 to 0.07. Import the NumPy library. 20 segments is a judgment call. If we use a smaller number, the training might not work. If we use uh, too big of a number, the training might take too long. So 20 seems to work in this case. Now I'm initializing the queue table into a 20 by 20 by 3 array because we have 20 segments of positions and 20 segments of velocities and 3 possible actions. The reset function returns the position and velocity as floats. We need to use the numpy digitize function to figure out which segment the value belongs to. We'll do the same conversion for the new state. And we'll set the current state segments to the new state segments. This code ends after one simulation, so we need to wrap this around a for loop. Episodes is how many times you want to do the training. Let's pass that in from the run function. Let's add the code for the queue function. The learning rate and the discount factor are both inputs to the queue function. We can talk about these parameters in the future. For now, let's just use these numbers. After taking an action, we want to update the queue table. We're updating the current state, velocity, and action combination. The penalty that we got from taking the action, it's going to contribute to the formula. Also contributing to the formula is the largest queue value in the new state. So if we were in another state and we came into P0 and V0, the largest value is going to be 0.3. Right now, the little car is learning through random exploration. It needs to gradually start using what it learned in the queue table. So let's add that code. 
The rest of the code and concepts are pretty much the same as the frozen lake video. So I'm going to go through this quickly. We start out with epsilon equal to 1, which is 100% random actions. And then we'll gradually decrease the randomness using the decay rate. The decay rate is set to equal to 2 divided by episodes. It means that once we get to 50% of the episodes, epsilon is going to be 0. We'll generate a random number. If it's smaller than epsilon, it's going to take the random action. Otherwise, it's going to look up the Q table to find the best action for this position and velocity pair. And after each episode, we'll decay the epsilon by the decay rate. Before we start training, I'm going to add some code to keep track of how many rewards we get for each episode. We'll graph the average rewards received per 100 episodes, and then we'll save it as an image. Import the library. I'm going to add two flags to the function to distinguish whether we're training or using the trained model. Also a flag to control whether we want to render the environment or not. I'll change the rendering here. After training, I want to save the queue table to a file. Let me import the library. We'll initialize the queue table if we're training. Otherwise, we'll load the queue table from file. We'll only do random actions when training. We'll only update the queue table when we're training. Let's make sure it runs. Okay, so right now it's randomly taking actions going either left, right, or staying neutral. As it moves around, it's actually updating the queue table and learning what action goes with what position and velocity. I'm going to stop it. Now I'm going to turn off rendering. And we're going to train it for 5,000 episodes. Okay, training is done. Let me bring up my files. You can see my queue values are saved to this binary file. And here's our training results. The x-axis is the number of episodes. We ran it for 5,000 episodes. The y-axis is the penalty. Remember that we put a cap of 1,000 actions. So during the first 1,500 episodes or so, where it's taking mostly random actions, it's pretty much never reaching the goal. Then as epsilon decreases and we start using the lookup table, we can see that the little car is starting to reach the goal. As we approach the halfway point where epsilon goes to zero and the car uses the Q table exclusively, we can see that it does pretty well all the way through. It looks like it's able to get up the hill in maybe around 180 actions. Now let's go back and actually run it using the model. Let's do it for 10 episodes. So now it's using the model. It solved it. So the little car figured out how to use momentum to get itself up the hill. That is pretty good. Alright guys, if you learned something, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.